as its fee. And this is my current cycle vlog. This is my uh, TTC update. So, um, quickly, I'm going to quickly go over where I'm at in the TTC world. I had a DNC due to a blighted ovum back in... I've tried to block it out of my memory. <laughs> April. Back in April. And they wanted my husband and I to take a break for two months after that. And then they wanted us to try naturally um, for three months because the doctors... Are like really convinced that they, they think I, I can get pregnant with just the metformin for my PCOS because technically it did work. Um, it just wasn't viable. So this is the third cycle. So if nothing happens this cycle, I'm going back to the doctor probably as soon as, I'll probably call as soon as um, the red plague shows up, if the red plague shows up. Um, so that would put me to... I don't know, middle of September, middle of this month. And I'd be going back to the doctor, and I'm assuming we'd be on to the next medication that they want to add, which I'd have to guess is Clomid, but I could be wrong. Um, whatever they want to try, I'm, I'm game. So, so, um, this is cycle three, and I am currently cycle day... <laughs> I lost track. 20. I think it's 20. I think I'm cycle day 20. If, if I'm wrong, I'll put it below like I normally do. Um, and I waited to do this because of VEDA. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I uh, did VEDA and I made it through successfully. But trying to do more videos than just the VEDA ones was like... An impossibility with me. I'm just happy I got the Veda one son. Plus, um, I'm sure everybody's feed was crazy as it was, so I just figured I'd wait. And, and, honestly, the Veda was was a really nice break from the TTC vlogs. I think I did one in August. I think I did a ranting TTC vlog because I just needed to get it out. Um, last cycle was nuts. I was not a happy camper. Um, all these awesome signs and they all ended up being for nothing. So, uh, yeah, I was aggravated and I needed to let it out. So, so this cycle I'm diving back in and we're hoping something works here. So, what I did differently this cycle, I want to document everything that I do so that I know what worked when it finally works. Um, going back to my last cycle vlog. I don't want to go over it too much. Anything that I did in the last cycle, I did this cycle. So I, I capped up with the higher doses of Ovaboost and the higher doses of Fertilla Aid in comparison to what I was previously doing. If you want more on that, um, look in my uh, TTC Journey video list and probably watch the last two. What else did I do? So I kept all of that the same. I've got notes down here because I, I will get, my brain will get lost if I don't write down what I need to say. <laughs> this cycle, aside from that, I did a higher dose of cinnamon. Cinnamon is supposed to be good for blood sugar. It's supposed to be good for PCOS people. Um, in the past, I was only taking one dose of cinnamon every morning that was 400 milligrams. Um, I'm now taking that dose in the morning and at night, so that's 800 milligrams a day. And I was only doing 400, so I changed that. And I am still doing that now. Um, when I run out of the current bottle that I have, which will probably be in about a week, I'm actually going to start on a new brand of cinnamon, which I believe will put me up to 1,000 milligrams a day. So that just a slight boost there due to the pill size, because I believe those are 500 a crack, and the ones I have right now are only 400 a crack. So that's that. And the other thing I added this month was Vitex, which... I have right here. I added Vitex. Now, there's like a whole plethora of reviews on this stuff. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, some of them are ugly, some of them are wonderful. 
Um, bottom line is, you know what, this stuff works differently for each individual. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people say it messes with their cycle, other people claim that is the reason why they got pregnant. So I am willing to give it a go. I'm willing to give anything a go, at least once, twice if it works. But there is warnings about this stuff if you're already on progesterone therapy, which I am. I do take progesterone orally during the last two weeks of my cycle because my progesterone is naturally too low for a person who's not pregnant, let alone one who is. So this stuff has been known to increase your progesterone. So if you give this a go like I do, like I have, um, just really keep track of your cycle good. See if it messes with your cycle because chances are it could be because this has raised your progesterone naturally and then maybe you're taking progesterone on top of it. So I am going to be watching this carefully and see what it does to my red plague this month. Um, but I'm thinking I'm going to be okay because you know what, I'm all for trying everything in moderation and I'm going to read to you guys what this bottle says to do. This bottle says each capsule is 400 milligrams and it says take one capsule two to three times daily for eight to twelve weeks. So that's eight to twelve hundred milligrams. After that, take one capsule daily. Vitex works gently. Best results obtained with continuous long-term use. My problem is going from zero to 1200 or even 800 is a little bit much for my liking because I overthink everything. I know this, but that's all right. Um, I have opted to only add one pill of this a day. I take it at night. Um, so that's 400 milligrams a day. I also take my regular progesterone at night. I originally intended on switching this up to be taken in the morning once my progesterone therapy started. I did not do that because I forgot. But that was my original intention. Don't know if that'll help anybody. Don't know if it'll matter, but I guess I kind of figured that uh, if you kind of even it out throughout the day, any potential side effects may not be there. I don't know, that's just what I was thinking. All right, so that's what I did. I added 400 milligrams of this a day. I don't know if I will up the dose or not next month. I'll just play it by ear. So, that's what I changed. Not much, but considering all of the ups and down reviews of the Vitex, I didn't want to add much more than that. Just see what it did. So, I am at cycle day 20. I'm at cycle day 20. And normally, I show my chart. So, who wants to see my chart? I got an awesome chart this month. Check it out. That's right. My chart doesn't exist this month because I shunned off temping this month. Done. Well, not done, but at least done for this month. I needed a break of the temping. I've done the temping in the past and it drives me nuts. And guess what? It drove me nuts again. Uh, like I said, last month's cycle was nuts. I'm not going to get too much into that. Go uh, watch some of my old, older vlogs from last month, um, August, if you uh, are interested. And it helped. It really did help. Um, I was not as anxiety ridden so far. I think I'm going to be okay since I'm getting towards the end of the cycle. Um, I wasn't over analyzing everything to death because there was nothing there to overanalyze. Um, so I'm, I'm okay with that. I am. The last number of charts were pretty consistent. You know, my, my, my temps go up and down a little bit nuts because of the PCOS, but the spike is generally there when it's supposed to be there. Sometimes it's got a day lag or so, but it does happen every month. So I just said, you know what, self, self, I'm not going to worry about it this month. And I'm okay with that. Maybe that little bit of less stress will help out. But uh, as for next month, I don't know. I may start temping again. Um, if I do, I've, you know, I've always tempted orally 
And a lot of people have told me, you know what, try temping vaginally because it's, uh, it's more accurate, especially since you have PCOS and the temping up and down, the temperatures up and down are part of PCOS. So I don't know. I may go with that. I don't know. I haven't decided. We'll see what this month brings. So I did. I did do my piano steak routine. Um, if you've watched my past vlogs, you'll know that I've been doing the Clear Blue Advanced Digitals, and I've been doing the cheapies for the most part at the same time, just for comparison. And every month they've gotten better and better, and this month is no exception. This month actually looks pretty awesome. They lined up perfectly. Um, and in the past, the, the positives on these, you know, when you pull it out of the little reader, the double lines are on these also. And in the past, I've noticed that the double lines on the cheapies, when I get a positive, are really, really dark. But on these, not so much. So I don't know if it's because these are more sensitive or what the deal is, but this month they were pretty dark and they lined up awesome. Um, the other thing I want to mention is this is a two month supply and if you time it just right, you can get it to last for three months. And it did last for three months perfectly for me. I got really lucky. I had five of these left this month, and five is exactly how many I needed. Um, I think there was someone, it might have been Lee, Lena Fishbowl, had asked a while back if this thing, the battery in it or whatever, was still good. For more than a month, I can now verify that it definitely works for at least three, even though the box says it's only got a two-month supply. So that's that. All right, let me show you my strips. So there you go. There's my strips. The clear blue advanced digitals are the purple ones on the left, and the cheapy blue ones are the internet ones on the right. I did start this month at cycle day 11. The last two months I did it at cycle day 10. Um, this month I started at cycle day 11, and it's a good thing I did, because like I said, I had exactly how many of those clear blue advanced purple ones as I actually needed. If I would have started a day early, I would have been up a creek. So, for the most part, I got my positive on cycle day 15. You'll see the days marked on the purple ones. And all of those purple ones, along with the internet ones, were done in the AM. Um, so I'm viewing cycle day 15 as my positive in the p.m., which is, ooh, sorry, that one right there. It's pretty close. Not much of a change there in the darkness. Um, but, you know, if you've used the, the purple clear blue advances, you know that once you get that peak reading, which is what that P is on the 15 stick, you can't test anymore because it gives you a nice solid smiley for 48 hours to remind you to go and baby dance. Um, so I continued on with the internets after that. And the 15 day in the PM looked pretty good. The 16 in, was done in the afternoon because I forgot to do it in the morning and you can see it's just starting to fade. Let me get closer. Just slightly starting to fade there. And the 17th it's saying goodbye. So that's when I stopped. But look at that double line on the 15th. Now, I know that's not like blue Sharpie marker, but I'm telling you, I have a hard time getting the lines to be as dark on these as they show up on those. And now keep in mind, these blue ones right here, so this is like a week old, and, and, and they do kind of fade after a while. So that was much darker at first. So... As you can see, my lines lined up perfectly. I'm pretty happy with this. So that's it. That's really all I've got. Um, I did pineapple core last month. I wanted to do the pineapple core this month, and you know what? It completely slipped my mind. Um, I was last month. I did it for three days. Um, I heard reviews, or not reviews, but but people and. 
Uh, the articles say, you know, you can try it for three days post-ovulation, you can try it for five days post-ovulation. Last month I did it for three. This month I was going to do it for five, and when I counted it out, I realized that part of that five-day uh, ordeal was going to be over Labor Day weekend, and I was going to be camping, and I thought about, you know, bringing it with me, and I just didn't. I didn't. Um, so, again, I kind of took it easy for me <laughs> this month, and I'm hoping that helps. I really am. Um, this last Saturday, so just a couple days ago, and again, I can't remember the cycle day. I'll put it right here. Um, I did feel some really sharp pains on my left side. But it, it felt like it was slightly higher than the, you know, female reproductive area pains should be. So I have no idea what that is or what that was, if it was anything. It happened a couple of times in a matter of a couple of hours. There were quick, sharp shooting pains that were there and then they were gone. And then it happened the three or four times and I haven't felt a thing since. So you know what, I have no idea what those were and when they happened, and now I am telling myself, nope, nope, that wasn't a sign. I am not even thinking of signs. After last month, I am not even thinking of signs. Nothing is a sign at all for fee this month because if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Um, and honestly, you know, looking back on when I did get pregnant, even though it wasn't viable, I didn't even realize I was pregnant. So I'm just going to keep telling myself that when it happens, I'm going to be surprised. And I'm not going to read into any signs that the red plague or mother nature or whatever the heck you want to call it may or may not be given me during my two-week wait. And I am going to keep a happy mind and a positive outlook, or at least I'm going to try. So that's what I got. That's what I got. And I am in my two-week wait, and we're crossing the fingers. And when I know, you guys will know. Talk to you guys later.